Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this video we're going to be painting a traitorous or, depending on your point of view, loyal Alpha Legionnaire. Okay, here we go with this Alpha Legionnaire. So we're going to go for contrast paint over metallic. So we need to do a little bit of underpainting first and get that, um, get the base ready. So. What I've done is I've sprayed this with some Chaos Black and then I've lightly gone over it with some Lead Belcher. If you haven't got the Lead Belcher spray, don't worry, you can use uh, just the normal paint. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some Null Noil. I'm going to paint this Null Noil over all of the model. So I'm not being particularly fussy. The only thing I'm looking out for is I'm making sure that it doesn't pool anywhere. Uh, so if we look at the, the leg here, just making sure that we've see it's pooling there we don't want that so we just want to move it away uh, and move this all the way around so you get a nice even coverage now i'm doing all the trim all the armor the weapons absolutely everything with this null oil so get that done let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll start to build up uh, this armor you can see that model's got a lot more definition now i've painted the blade base i've just given it like a really rough coat of black as well to help me kind of delineate so what I want to do now is I want to dry brush with some Necron compound um, from the top down. So I'm using a makeup brush for this. So it's just a nice soft, um, soft brush. So it's not one of the, like a hard dry brush. And I'm just making sure that I'm doing downward strokes. So this kind of catches on the the top edges, I'm working it loose from the putty there. So I have to make sure I hold it on. So just work around. Brush, dry brushing down like this, obviously leaving the black in the recesses. And uh, we'll come back, we'll give it one more dry brush, and then we'll start to think about uh, how we color the armor. So just get that done, and then we'll come back. Next up, I'm dry brushing with some chrome. So this is the same chrome that we use uh, for highlighting. And again, on the main part, I'm just pulling it down so it's catching some of those edges just like that because it just gives us that brightness that, that we need now when it comes to the shoulder pad I'm just gonna stipple it on just to give me some some brightness there because obviously we're gonna do a lot of work with the contrast paint to, to blend that in and we just kind of want a, a circular spherical highlight in there not a not a sharp one so go around get that done do as much of it or as little as you want and then we're going to come back and you can see that it's much brighter uh, we're going to come back and uh, we'll have a look at popping that contrast in next once we're done doing that we're going to use some McKelly and green contrast paint now uh, i'm using this straight from the pot but i guess one of the keys uh, to think about when you use this is not to have too much on your brush just work it around over the metallics taking your time around some of the bits that are already done making sure we don't get uh, too much of it pooling the other thing to make sure of as well is that we do uh, do panels and finish those panels before we move on to the next one uh, so you can see here make sure I'm still in focus just gonna go around and do uh, the back here as well so that there's no kind of blend line uh, one of the things to just be careful of when you do this is just make sure that, like I said, you don't get it pooling uh, too much in one place. And as it dries, it'll kind of uh, go down to a, a nice, more kind of satin or, or matte finish. So I'm just going to work this over here, over the hand armour. And essentially you're going to do this all over the, uh, the armour. When you do the shoulder pads, just be careful because they, are, uh, they may need two, uh, two coats. Uh, sorry, moving about too quick there. So, um, just just do two coats on the on the shoulder pads because you're going to need to to build that up, um, and not have it kind of looking like tide marks like you would if you used like a, a wash on there, for example. So, taking your time, work your way all the way round. Like I said, try your best not to get it over the silver. If you do, it's not the end of the world because uh, we can just go back in, and especially if it's just the end, we're gonna gonna do edge highlights on it anyway. So. It's no problem so take your time doing this and then we'll come back when it's all dry so we've got quite a good effect now moving forward 
really happy with that. Probably looks a little greener than it did on the camera just there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do all the, the, the ribbing next. So we're just going to use Black Templar contrast paint for this. So we've got the lead belcher down. So we might as well take advantage of having it there. So we're just going to paint all the kind of the ribbing with the Black Templar. And as it dries, you'll start to get just a, a little subtle highlight uh, in there. So just work your way around the model, getting that done. Uh, I suppose the back of the legs is where we'll... Uh, get the most prominent parts uh, and any any pipes or tubes you want to be black as well do them like this and then we'll come back and uh, have a look at <coughs> excuse me have a look at the uh, the edging let's edge what's left of the silver then so we're going across to the palette just got some chrome from Vallejo Model Air now this isn't thinned at all because it's thinned to go through airbrushes anyway so there's no need for us to do uh, anything extra on there and all we're going to do is going to find all these silver edges we're going to add a, a nice edge highlight of chrome. Now what you'll find that this does is it will kind of subtly blend a little with um, some of the, 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 the dry brushing we did earlier. But it will also stand out as being fairly stark of its own accord. And again, any, any kind of straight edges like that, we just want to pull the brush along just to catch them. So all I'm going to do is go around the entirety of the model looking for these little silver edges and just catching them and, and kind of popping that, that bright silver highlight on them. So we've got a very nice shiny Alpha Legionnaire there. So what we want to do now is start to bring some warmth back into the model. So we're going to use some uh, Rhinox Hide um, and this is just to base the, all the leather bits. So we've got things like the holster and we've got the, the belt as well. So it's not a huge amount, but what we'll do is we'll do these in kind of like a, a warm brown colour. And the reason we'll do a warm brown colour is because that will contrast quite nicely with the colder steel and the colder uh, bluey green on the model. So get all those leather bits you want base coated with the Rhinox hide and then we'll come back and we'll highlight it up next. When that Rhinox hide is dry, the first highlight is going to be with a little Doom Bull Brown. Now we're just going to be fairly, uh, fairly messy. Oh, messy is the wrong word, but fairly liberal, I guess, with the application of the of the Doom Bull Brown. Because essentially, what we're saying is that the the Rhinox hide is the kind of the, the kind of the deeper recessed colour, and then the Doom Bull Brown is the kind of the the lighter colour. That we'll use to highlight just saves us a step really not having to go in and worry about but washing it so just give that nice chunky uh, highlight with the doom ball brown and we'll come back just for the final highlight next and the highlight final highlight we're going for is just a little bit of scrag brown now i've not thinned this down at all i'm just letting the uh, the wet palette kind of uh, thin it for me and essentially what we're looking to do is, is just catch those kind of raised edges. So this is a nice warm uh, leather colour going on here. You see I'm not necessarily just dragging the brush, I'm just touching the brush along the area, just in like a kind of stippling motion just to try and catch uh, those edges that are best, best affected. So get that done. And we'll come back to that little bit of strapping next. The colour we're going to base the strapping with is Rackarth Flesh. Now I've opened a new pot to this and it's not too thick so I've not thinned it down too much. But obviously uh, you may need to adjust based on uh, your own pot. So this is the strapping here on the, uh, on the holster that kind of goes all the way uh, around the holster. And the other thing we're going to do as well, like any horns that, that uh, are on the model. So like we've got on this one on the helmet, but also we've got the horns and, and teeth kind of jutting out the armour. We're going to make sure that we get those uh, covered off as well. Now we will base them with, with Wraithbone a little bit later, but just using the, uh, the Rackarth Flesh will make that job a heck of a lot easier. So get that all done and then we'll come back and we'll shade the, the strapping next. To shade the strapping, just going to use a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade, 
just all over the bits that we've uh, covered in Rakar flesh. Just let that kind of settle on there. Uh, don't do it on the horns because uh, we're going to base them with wraith bone later on. But just work it along all that strapping. And make sure it's in all the recesses and we'll highlight it next. Once that Agrax earth shade is dry, it's going to take some pallid witch flesh. And again, not really uh, thin this down too much. Just relying on the, the wet palette uh, to do a lot of the work for me. Uh, and we're just going to work in kind of highlighting the, those kind of sharp raised edges just to get some contrast uh, across the the strapping which I guess it's important to have it this color because it does contrast nicely against the the leather obviously it could be brown or black but it would just fade into itself so just work that round both sides make sure you're happy with it and we'll come back to the horns and teeth next so like I said before, we were going to go back in and, and highlight, or sorry, base up the horns. So just going to use wraith bone for this. So nice and simple, just pop it over those bits that you've left uh, Rakarth flesh. Now this should cover in one max two coats. So just take your time working it on there. Make sure that it's uh, covering everything nicely and then we'll come back and we'll uh, start to get that horn effect next. Once that wraith bone is dry, we're going to shade everything and we're going to shade it with some skeleton horde. So I'm just going to show you this horn here. So basically I'm going to paint the whole horn, make sure that that goes into the recesses. That skeleton horde goes into those recesses. And make sure we paint uh, both sides, of course. So you see we've got a nice kind of brownie colour uh, going on there. Make sure to really work it in. And what we want to do is you want to take some more skeleton horde and we just want to do this towards the tip so there, there. and then when it dries we'll probably do the same again as that'll just kind of give us uh, a nice darkening toward towards the tip so go around all the the teeth and the horn with the skeleton horde and we'll come back and kind of uh, we'll highlight it then next once we're certain that that uh, skeleton horde is dry let's go back to this wraith bone that we've got on the palette and we're just going to use that to just paint along the raised areas of these horns working our way all the way to the tip and then if we're able to run our brush down like that we get a nice highlight so work your way on both horns and the the kind of teeth backing up with this highlight and then we'll come back uh, and I think we've just got a couple more bits left to do. Once we've uh, got those highlights in, we're just going to do the last major uh, bit. And I, we'll finish with the eyes last, but it's going to take some corn red. Now just thin this down a uh, touch, and I'm going to use this for things like this uh, bit of robe that we've got uh, hanging out across the model. So there's a fair few bits. Take your time, be careful not to get this on the, the bits you've finished or the kind of the silver chain links underneath chain mail. And the other thing I'm going to use to do uh, or to paint this is the, the weapons as well, so the weapon casings. Uh, and again, the reason I'm choosing to use red is because it just kind of uh, offsets the uh, the coldness of the armour with a, with a much warmer colour uh, for, the, for the weapon casings. So once it's all said and done, it'll work quite nicely so work around and get that done and then we'll uh, come back and we'll shade this red next once we're happy that no um sorry that corn red is dry we're going to take some null oil just to shade them down now we're just shading the red areas we're kind of avoiding the uh the silver we've already finished and don't be shy do the the cloth as well because we're going to be putting a bit of an extreme highlight and I don't mean extreme as in like a, a white highlight I mean extremes in and it's just going to shift the tone of the red shade a little so get that done and then we'll come back and highlight it next okay so once the nano oil is dry like I said we were going to shift the um shift the the red a little bit so normally with the corn red we go for a, a less saturated red but i'm going for evil sun scarlet 
to really kind of just give it a, a sharp point. Now, if you see on the palette, I've I have thinned it down a little because it was a little thick coming out of uh, the pot with me. And what we're looking to do essentially is we're looking to catch all the edges of the bits we've already painted uh, corn red. See, I've just accidentally caught a little bit of the silver metallic there. It's no biggie. I can just go back in with the chrome and just correct that little mistake I made there. Same for the uh, on the sword. Sorry, it's a little awkward for me to <laughs> to show you and also keep everything in focus. So just pulling along that sharp edge there. So do that for the cloth as well. And then we've just got the eyes to do and this Alpha Legionnaire is done. So let's finish off with the eyes. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of white scar. I've not thinned it down because um, mine's quite thin anyway. And I'm just going to paint this into the eye sockets of the helmet. And you can use this anywhere you've got um, lenses, not just the eyes. But let that dry and then we'll go over it next, ready for those bright red eyes. Finishing off the eyes is really simple with a, just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of Blood Angels Red contrast paint. Just painted into that eye socket. A little dot of white when it's dry and that's done. Now, there's a few other bits and pieces you can do. If you want to put some gold on there, you can. I mean, I might just use some Nasdreg yellow to save me, uh, you know, going through and using loads of gold paint. And Nasdreg yellow will work quite nicely on things like the, the shell casings, for example. Maybe the odd bit of detail here or there. But otherwise, it's done. We'll have a look at him on the table next. So there we have it. This Alpha Legionnaire is done and he's ready for action on the table. You can, of course, add a transfer. I don't have any because I don't spend any time with traitors whatsoever. So I'm afraid I'm all out. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the content on the channel so you guys are getting what you want to see. If you'd like to support me, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link to my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me, live Q&A sessions, as well as some exclusive content. You can also use the link for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% of all your wargaming needs. And there's also a link to Amazon where I list my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.